started. Oh, we did? Yeah. Okay, we started. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We started. Is anybody home? That's it. Chris from Cambridge, Rota Lady, Unholy Toledo. Guest Ralphie, and good morning to you no, all. Nobody can hear us yet, Leonard. Huh? Oh, no, they can't hear us. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just like when I talk like that. You just like when I talk like that. Right, okay, so you know you can listen to us Monday through Monday, every day of the week, Wait seven. A second. Are we on? I'm telling the people on demand. But, oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. You can listen to the show 9 a.m. Eastern every day of the week. Lenny Melnick, fantasysports.com forward slash live to join in the live chat room. And as you know, if you're listening on demand, we like to wait until the sound comes through the chat room before we start saying hi to everybody. Right, Leonard? That's right. I, already said, hi. I already said hi thinking we were already on. We're not uh, on Okay, yet. we Just still wait. we still got another minute to go, so let's see what happens. But for those of you who can still hear us, uh, sorry. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Today's what? Today's the 18th, uh, and let's see if uh, we're still on the 17th, so let's see what happens. Love okay. it, Chris J.P. We started, Chris a little, JP here today? started a little early today, but that's okay. The chat room will determine exactly what we do in the future. We have so many shows, and this is what I don't understand, okay? Nobody is hearing us yet. All right. <laughs> Nobody. All right, let's now see. they can hear us, but let me tell them to refresh before you t say it all. Yes, okay. Lenny's already said this stuff three I times this morning. I said it three times. Sorry, Sounds you... is good. There you go. Refresh and ready. All right. All right, so go says, ahead. What were you uh, saying? What Lynn? I'm saying to Chris from Cambridge <laughs> and Danny Fuller, James Caplion, Rota Lady, uh, Triple Play, Unholy Toledo. Unholy uh, Toledo. Do, do, do. I'll let you continue singing. Yes. I like to sing. And we do the show not knowing what to expect in the chat room. We have some tremendous loyal listeners, of course. But uh, at this time of year, uh, and I don't get it. I just don't get it. There are very few, if any, fantasy baseball shows left. And all those sites and shows and programs that started Fantasy Baseball Talk uh, before the season, how do you stop talking about it now? There's no reason. While some players are, are, are coming down the stretch, you just leave them hanging? It's not right, and it's killing, to me, it's hurting the fantasy baseball industry more because it's about credibility. So if you're broadcasting fantasy baseball and then in the last month of the season, because football is the new sport, you stop talking about baseball and stop helping the people who counted on you uh, all year. To me, it's not right. Guess and what? What? It's Tur Juniorette's birthday. She's one oh, year old. Oh, one year old to Tur Junior. How about Juniorette. Juniorette, good morning. We don't know her name, Turd. Uh, okay. but don't you think it's about time we know Juniorette's great. name? great. Tommy Johnson, triple play. So the, does anybody agree that even though a lot of people now are, are, are listening to fantasy football, and I don't believe you should stop fantasy football, but I, I definitely don't. It's very popular, probably more popular than baseball. But if you've been listening to baseball all along since March, how do you cut it off now? Okay, how do you cut it? Oh, James Caplingon says 100% true. Thank you, James. You don't cut it off. All right, let's be professional. To me, that's amateur night. Yeah, you got more listeners for football. So for a couple of months, you do both. Is it that difficult to do both? What do you think? No, it's not that difficult at, at all. But people like football, and that's of what course. it is. And we like football, too. No, but, we don't. Well, I don't Can dislike you not lie? it. I'm not saying... What are you we, trying to make new friends? No, we don't play football because we talk baseball all year. And there are others that specialize in football. We let them have it. We just don't care okay, about Okay, Leonard Donaldson is here. And uh, so if you have any questions about anything, it's time to let us know what you're thinking. Okay? It's absolutely time. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure Boston Paul's not talking. If the Earth was splitting in half, CBS Radio would still talk about football. But yeah, probably, I think you're right. But I think they would talk about it after the split. Okay. So we'll see. Now here's a question for you. 
A question for the chat room. Okay. okay. Uh, should those who start and run leagues, all right, <laughs> that means making all the calls, collecting all the money, and establishing all the rules, should those people who start and run leagues play fantasy baseball without paying? Okay, what do you think? Big L? Yes, I think so. Laura's here. Laura's back from the great state of Cape Cod. Good morning to Laura. Uh, so who do you think? Should, th- should those who start and run leagues play without paying? And you still aren't paying attention to me. Okay. Uh, should they get to play without paying? I yes. already said yes. What do you want me to do? Say yes again. Yes. Okay. Uh, but that's uh, less money in the tail, then. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I have mixed feelings. Good morning to Laura. whoop de doo Laura's here. Back, Everything is great. Back from Cape Cod. Okay, now the uh, Red Sox are the first team since 1910 who have two players with 30 steals. Okay, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna ask you to name one because the other everybody one everybody knows one. I didn't even know who one was. Uh, who the other guy so, was? So yes, unfortunately, but David Hamilton was one guy, and uh, David Hamilton was one, and Jaron Duran is the say, other. You already t- you said the genius of the day. What? J- David Hamilton was a good genius of the day. Nobody would know David Hamilton. That's Nobody. true. Can you believe Nobody. it, you people? He has 30 steals. David Hamilton has 30 steals. Yep. Okay. Who is this guy? Uh, look him up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. David Hamilton's an everyday player who's emerged this year. Probably wasn't drafted at all, but has certainly uh, amassed the stolen bases necessary to put you into uh, contention. So uh, there you go. All right, okay. but uh, Hooper, do you remember Hooper? No, who's Hooper? Hooper is the one, he played for major league teams between 1909 and 1925. And he, this was the last time the Red Sox had two players with 30 steals in 1910. Oh, okay. yeah, it was David, Hooper and Speaker. Tris Speaker was the other yes. one. We all know him. Yeah. David Hooper, that's a good one. Where'd you learn David Hooper from? Uh, <laughs> just, just doing her homework. You know, people don't know this. Good morning to Jay Gibbs. Good Jeremy Gibbs is here. Good morning. It's been a while, kid. Uh, nobody really knows it. I'm not making a big deal out of it. But Andrea and I, uh, every day, 5 a.m., that's when we start our preparation. Or 4. Or for sometimes 4. And, and, and that says one thing. We don't have to do it, but we love it. We absolutely love it. That's why we're doing it all year round. You love it. And I love it. <laughs> and we, and we I love it. you, and we thank you for all your support, because without it, we'd have nothing in the world to do. Okay. Tommy Johnson, good morning. All right. Uh, okay, so let's see yeah. what the chat room thinks about Tyler Glass now on the injured list. Wow. Is this a phantom injury list? Is this manager sending Tyler Glass now to the injured list as a phantom way to keep him from pitching too many innings? So the Dodgers, especially you, pesky Danny, the Dodgers, they placed him on the injured list. They say he has right elbow tendonitis, okay? But before they did that, they pushed his next start from Friday to Saturday after he pitched seven innings in his last outing. But he's now going to miss multiple turns through the rotation, And it's hard to believe that, I don't know. I mean, obviously, elbow tendonitis, it happens, definitely. And it happens to guys like Tyler Glass now, definitely. But you go out there and you pitch seven innings, okay? You've already pitched a full season of innings compared to your career history. And all of a sudden, you're on the injured list. No news of, like, soreness. No, uh, you know, being taken out of the game. No no tests being run. Just all of a sudden, Tyler Glass now on the injured list. Is it a phantom? Uh, is it a phantom? Well, it's not the first time that it will be a phantom. That they need an excuse to uh, to put a guy in the injured list. I mean, Woodruff's on there. Woodruff, Bieber... Azale and I'll, yes, Lazardo, all these guys, Cody, Cody Senga. None of these guys are on Phantom, though. No, but they're all have been on the injury list, and these are all good pitchers. 
especially Bieber, Aslan. And these are all good pitchers. Turd says yes on Glass now. Rotorius says Glass now is a sham. James K said phantom injury to get to the playoffs. Uh, Triple Play wants to know how was it getting Hooper's autograph live in 1910? Oh, I found it very <laughs> interesting because you uh, and Aunt Holly were there. Yeah, me and Aunt Holly were there, and we both got his autographs. That's the first time I met Aunt Holly, and I actually got his autograph as well. What were you guys like? Five? I don't know. Okay. Uh, also, Turd says nobody does phantom injuries and real injuries quite like the Dodgers. And Kershaw's pitching today. He yep. turned a corner recently. That's according to Turd. And Danny, the pesky Dodger fan, he says that the Dodgers need to look for a real strength and conditioning staff. Well, that's very true. The Dodgers have been up and down with their pitching. They have so many injuries on their team. But moving over to Shohei Otani. Hit his 38th home run of the season, stole just stolen base 36 and 37, walked Holy twice, shit. The Do- and the Dodgers lost with the Cardinals winning four to, uh, five to two. So here's my question. I've asked this before, but I've never really uh, uh, asked you this. Would you rather see Shohei Otani stop pitching altogether? He could hit 38 home runs. He could have such a... And just concentrate on offense. You think that's better than having Otani pitch? I like Otani as the closer. Uh, to me, a closer is a total waste. What? He's a total waste as a closer. Why? He, because he's too good to be a closer. So you're saying no R- pitching at all is better than being Well, a- I'm asking that. I'd rather see no pitching at all than being a closer. And wipe. you can't be a closer because you got to be ready every day. And you can't be doing that. He hit, all right, so I say that he either gets in the lineup as he's doing or or just concentrate on his hitting. It's as simple as that. Concentrate on your hitting. Now, how many of you have Paul Skeens? What's the Skeenus or Skeens? I don't know. I don't I know. say Skeens. Skeens. And is, I'll tell you something. Is, is this guy cooked? He's been an all-star. He's been good. 45 innings. Got a 5-6 ERA in his last seven games. Yes, he's cooked. Does that mean that you trade him? Tommy Johnson, our resident Pittsburgh Pirates insider. Yeah. What do you think about Skeens? Does he need to be... Now, he the leash needs to be tightened on this kid, right? I mean, the Pirates, they're just so bad at bringing up good pitchers. And they, they're usually not any good until they leave Pittsburgh. I mean, I could name a few off the top of my head, including, I think, Tyler Glass now. Right. Also, Garrett Cole and others. But what what are they doing? They're going to keep... Although, look, he did only pitch... I, I don't know. They need to put him on a leash like Crochet. That's my opinion. But I want to know what Tommy Johnson thinks. And Leonard Donaldson wants to know if Otani would play outfield if they kept him from pitching. Would he be able to play in the field? Well, he's yeah, he could play in the field, and he's done it. But I say just let him hit. Let him hit. Okay, that's it. And, you know, pitching is important. But you can get a pitcher, but he's a dominant hitter, and it has to take a toll. So uh, even a little bit, okay? So I say Otani. Guess Ralphie. That must be Boston Paul. All right, is that Boston Paul? He All says right. schemes will be fine. We'll see about All right, that. Turd says thanks to Chris from Cambridge for saying happy birthday to the one-year-old juniorette. That's right. Happy birthday. All right, birthday Stevie O is here. Junior. And also Jameson Tyon pitched in Pittsburgh. Uh-huh. All right, so... Tommy Johnson says he thinks the Pirates need to chill down with Skeens. It's sad that the Pirates are in the position that they're in. So if you have Skeens, is now the time that you trade him? Trading deadline is over, Leonard. Well, no, in some leagues it's not. In some leagues you can still make a trade. And that's one of my questions. Is that really worth it, uh, having a trade deadline? Uh, Shouldn't the trades, and I talked about this during the week, Shouldn't the trades just be examined by a committee and uh, you have a, have an extra guy until unless uh, uh, just in case that one of the deals is uh, in favor of somebody in the committee. But here's the, I mean, I'm telling you. Oh, guess Ralphie. I guess his name is Ralphie. Welcome aboard, Ralphie. OK, he will 60 home, 60 home run, 600. Harper will oh, hit. Harper. 
because of his ability to DH. Okay. All right. Another another possible phantom injury, but not probable. Hunter Green now oh, on the. Oh boy! No, he's real. He's real. He's a real injury. Okay. Fifteen day injury list. He's got a right elbow soreness. Uh, they did not make a corresponding move yet. But 25 years old, he was dominant in his last start, holding the Cardinals to four hits and one run over seven innings. He struck out eight, walked one, but he felt soreness in his elbow following the outing. So the okay. pain temporarily went away, but uh, it's back, and now Green will need an MRI before Cincinnati can decide uh, what's next. So MRI, Tommy Johnson MRI. says he doesn't think you should trade schemes. For once, just build around a guy. Actually put effort into building around him, considering where they drafted him. Why invest that draft pick in, uh, to potentially have nothing? I agree. They just keep trading off great draft picks yeah. for other p- potential minor leaguers. A tremendous chat room. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, and we're not done yet. Okay? And uh, Turd brings up the fact that Hunter Green was the lone remaining top 10 velocity starter from last year to not get hurt this year. Yep, and you've seen an and awful now he lot is. of injuries. And what about your boy? I Gallon. think he was your number one pitcher to start the season. Zach. I like that he's not doing good right now. I might be able to get him for the same price I did last year. Yeah, nine he's a and good six, pitcher. Took the loss on Saturday. Uh, as Arizona was down 6-1 to one by Tampa. Four runs, nine hits, two walks, five innings, and struck out three. So he Despite an, getting extra... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Litter. Uh, no, you, you know the question. Even though he got extra rest after his last outing on August 10th, he had cramping and soreness, so they put him off a little bit. He didn't look his best yesterday. He generated only seven swinging strikes in 98 pitches... All right, he's 29, so, you know, I don't know how much longer the gallon bandwagon in my world is going to continue. <laughs> but since the All-Star break, he's got a 3.78 ERA, a 1.56 whip. That's horrible. Right. Okay, 26 strikeouts and 16 walks in 33 innings, and that's not his usual pitching, okay? He's going to look to regain his form in the next outing, which lines up to come against Boston on the road. But he has yet to allow a home run in six starts since the All-Star game. So Zach Gallon, he is a quality pitcher, but is he among the best, as Andy predicted? Uh, I think he falls just short of that. Oh, come on. No, what I about it's Junior and Roberto Clemente share the same birthday? Okay, how okay. about that? You now, uh, we're all, many people are saying that Major League Baseball is in a slump. Many people are saying that Major League Baseball is losing its luster. But there were 37,555 people at the A's game today, and they don't even know where the A's are playing next year. That's yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. What is, what's going on with that? But they're not as bad of a team as we thought they were going to be, right? No, but the fans bad. are packing it in. They must have had something going on yesterday at the yep. ballpark. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's great, okay? And uh, that's pretty good. Let's see what's going on in the chat room. We got a new guest, Ralphie. Ralphie. I don't guest know who Ralphie. he is, but good morning to Ralphie. Announce your name, okay? Who His are you, His name is Ralph. Ralph. No, well, yeah, but it's uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Freddie Freeman came out of the game yesterday. He injured his finger on uh, right middle finger. Uh, x-rays came back negative, but he's considered day-to-day. So keep <laughs> They probably had the food trucks there, Leonard Donaldson, because they got a great whole parking lot full of food trucks. But, I don't know what's going on. But, but the, the Oakland game must have had somebody. You talking about Freddie Freeman? Fre- yes. What you talking about, His Freddie? finger swelled up at the beginning of the sixth inning, and, it, and that's when he came out. So if you have Freddie X-rays Freddie Freeman, are negative, though. Yeah, but if you have Freddie Freeman, uh, he could be in the lineup today. If the swelling subsides, but you know what? Uh, if I if Freddie Freeman's on my team, I'm not playing him today until I'm a hundred percent sure that he's ready. Okay. Turd is going to stream Kyle Harrison this week, and that's okay. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean Kyle Harrison turn has turned out to be uh, a pretty good pitcher. Has Harrison? Here's the question: Has Harrison? Uh, was Harrison? 
Big Al on the Prowl is here. Okay, let You're me... not on Rotowire. You're yeah. actually uh, in Facebook. Qu- quite, please. All right, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. You well, really don't know what you're okay. doing. Okay, well, you don't say where I am, but I don't want anybody following me around, okay? <laughs> All right? Okay. Don't you dare, okay? <laughs> Don't you don't you love when the uh, wife takes over, okay? Well, sometimes you need help. Yeah, sometimes I need help more than that, okay? So who was I talking about? <laughs> Harrison, maybe. Oh yeah, I was talking Kyle about Harrison, Harrison, who wasn't drafted. I yes, don't, he was. You think that Kyle Harrison was? Ooh. Yes, I do because he was on. Okay, take off caps lock first. That's what we're going to do. Quiet, please. Okay. To answer my question, do you think that Harrison was, uh, I don't know, uh, do you think Harrison was drafted? What I'm, happened over here? Yes, I do, because he was part of uh, Roto, he was part of, I don't know why your keyboard is not working. Did you spill know, something no, in No, I it? didn't spill anything. I'm having a little trouble with the computer, but uh, it's not the first time. And, you know, look, at, at age uh, 77, I don't even know what a computer is, okay? No catch-up. <laughs> okay, he was in Malpal's formula, which means he had a potential to break out. So we did talk about Kyle Harrison quite a bit throughout the season. Okay. And the preseason. All right. Right, right Laura? That's I'm good. so glad Laura's back, okay? Well, we I, missed you, Laura. Laura was in Cape Cod. Okay. I hope you had a great time. Did a did a great job, and Mary too. We missed you both, so yes, nice we to did. see you back. Yes. Okay, on to the next item. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. Oh boy, here's a player you can talk about for a week. Bobby Witt Jr. Go ahead. He's currently batting three fifty two with twenty five homers and twenty five stolen bases, and you know there have only been two seasons that a hitter hit. 350 with 25 home runs and 25 stolen bases in Major League history. I'll tell you one I remember. Actually, two. There's been two. Oh, there's two. There's been two besides Bobby Witt. The only one I remember is Darren Erstad. Okay, who's the other one? I have no no recollection. It's 1997. 1997, but I know Darren Erstad, who for a while there was my favorite player, and he was a sleeper. He wasn't really... Uh, a big, mo- uh, you know, it didn't cost a lot to get. But who's the other one? I'm not going to tell. I want the chat room to guess. Who's okay. the other hitter that did the that had the batting average of at least 350 and hit two, 25 homers and stole 25 bases in a season? One of them was Bobby Witt Jr. The other one was Darren Erstad in 2000. And there's one other guy that did it in 1997. Who are you talking about? Oh. I'm not going to tell. All right. Uh, okay. But, well, there's a phone call. Who's 631-406-7141. Chris is calling. Seven one four one. It's Chris. And it's we'll, Chris from Cambridge. Welcome aboard, Chrissy. Okay, we have to put it. Hold, hold on, on one on. sec. we got to put you on speaker. Are you there? I'm still here. Okay, good. Go ahead, Chris. You're on live. All right. Good morning, kids. I'm going to take you back in time again. Go okay. Ahead. We're going to go back to when Dale Murphy played for the Braves. Okay. Do, do either of you remember when he used to write a Sunday sports column? Oh, no, I don't remember. I remember when he was a catcher, but I don't remember him writing a sports column. Where, he, he had, a, pro, he had, a, pro, he had a, a column called Ask Dale Murphy, and it was for youth. And instead of uh, payment, he had the Atlanta uh, Journal of Constitution offer a four-year college scholarship to a high school, high school graduate each year. That's tremendous. I don't remember that. I'm trying to think of any other major league player that had a column, and I can't recall any. So if there's anybody else who has a, uh, an idea of a major league player having a, having a baseball column uh, weekly, daily, whatever, let me know. All right, and Chris. Of course, there's no shortage of baseball writers. That's for sure. That's for oh, sure. Gosh. Okay, thank you, Chris. And it's interesting. <laughs> Thanks, that, Chris. And it's interesting about baseball writers. Okay, and I talked about this earlier. Everybody writes about baseball in March and April, and then they stop about now. Leaving, you know, there are plenty of people who follow these guys, 
about baseball. They got their team. They got their everything going on, their season. Uh, but they f- stop with their baseball coverage and forget it. It's bad. No, it wasn't Tony Gwynn. It was, the answer was Larry Walker. Okay, in 1997. Larry. Larry Walker. The train. The train Walker. I don't know what. I just made that up. All right, so Bobby Miller. Yes, Bobby Miller. Everybody thinks he's going to be good, but so far he hasn't been good. Well, he made his return from AAA yesterday, and he didn't look great. Yeah. He allowed a lot of hard contact and couldn't throw strikes. The four seem great as being driven down by a handful of pitches, but it's clear he's lost a step in that department. And the crazy thing about Bobby Miller's awful season is he literally had the best start of his entire life to begin this year. Yes, he did. He was recalled from AAA Oklahoma City prior to yesterday's game against the Cardinals. And he did not pitch good at Oklahoma City. He had a 5.54 ERA, a 1.69 whip, and as many walks as strikeouts, okay? But the Dodgers have had so many problems in the rotation. I mean, they got Kershaw, Flaherty, Gavin Stone, Walker Bueller, Bobby Miller, uh, Glass now is now injured, Yamamoto's been injured, Tony Gonsolin's been injured. Dustin May, Dustin, dude. Yeah, Emmett Sheehan's been injured, uh, Blake Trinan. River Ryan. Holy, River Ryan. Just they went should, on, well, on let me the fix deal. this. Go ahead. This is driving me crazy. What's driving you crazy? This. This? Or is this. that just me? All right, this. go ahead. Okay. Hello, Unholy is typing. Okay, yes. now you can see. Okay. All right, so anyway, Miller not doing great at AAA, also not doing great in the majors. Danny, Danny, Danny. That's right, Danny. Your pitchers suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shane Whitcomb whistles his first MLB hit, a double. Three. I don't know who Shane Whitcomb is. Do you? Shane Whitcomb. Whitcomb. W-H-I-T-C-O-M-B. I have no idea. He hit his first double, and it went 393 damn feet, okay? And he's an Astro, right? Yes, he's an Astro, and he's the only player to compile 25 homers and 25 steals in the minors this year. Okay, what we try to do is try to tell you about the new players. I mean, until this morning, I wasn't sure who Shea Whitcomb was. So I'm sure that's the case in many leagues. So we're telling you about these players. Whitcomb is a player to pick up. That's for sure. Right. So uh, Whitcomb didn't feature in Friday's game after receiving his first career call-up from AAA Sugarland. He only had to wait a day for his debut, and he made the most of it. Okay, he was one of six Astros to log multiple hits. He got the start at third base in place of Alex Bregman, who's got an elbow problem. And is considered day-to-day. So not only did Whitcomb hit 25 homers and steal 25 bases, the only one in the minors to do it this year, he also batted 293 with an on-base percentage of 378. 91 RBIs and 73 runs scored in a 108 game with Sugarland. This and, and Chris from Cambridge says the chat room is full of life. Okay? And... Uh, with that in mind, Chris, what am I full of? Okay, that's what I what I want to know. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, he may play some third base. Uh, Alex Bregman's elbow considered day to day, but um, assuming he adjusts to major league pitching, uh, he's got some defensive versatility. Could be playing first base as well. Yum, that sounds good, Mitchell Hartson. Welcome aboard to Mitchell, who talks about in Chicago, you get a hot dog roll big enough to put a pickle spear and then garnish with Dijon mustard and a couple of squirts of sriracha. Uh There you go. Ralphie's back. Okay, good for you, Ralphie. Uh, Everyone knows the Mariners Park isn't good for hitting, but you don't recognize that Coors Field is just tremendous for pitching, okay? Uh... Uh, Mitch Hartson, it's a great dog to well, have. No, it, it, uh, let me read that again. Okay. Uh, Mariners Park isn't good for hitting, but people don't recognize it is basically Coors Field, but in pitchers, okay? So Mariners Park is a tremendous, I mean, tremendous. They, their park factor is 91, and the worst park factor is rated 101 to Philadelphia Phillies. 
Okay. <laughs> Unholy Toledo says if you put fantasy football in YouTube search, tons of videos by geeks and nerds with good info. Let them do the legwork. Yeah. And that's true. There's just only so much information you need. That's pretty good. Okay. So let's move on. But that is a great pickup for this Sunday's waiver wires. Okay. Shea Whitcomb for right. the Astros. And also, you could hold on to him for next year. If you're in a keeper league. Turd says Tyler O'Neill is back. He started with 100% shares, and he's glad he traded him in most. He's tiresome to roster. Okay. Uh, Lindor has six weeks to hit six more homers and steal six more bases to become a 30-30 shortstop in back-to-back seasons. Wow. 30-30 shortstop. I remember when shortstop was considered a light-hitting position, and then Cal Ripken came along. Alan Trammell came along, but that that was it. And I'm sure Ernie Banks was, uh, for years, the lone shortstop that you could count on for hitting. And now it's uh, it's a pretty good position led by Lindor. Everyone knows the Mariners Park is not good for hitters. But people don't recognize it as basically Coors Field for pitchers. Yeah, so I, basically, that's it, something I said to people already. Oh, you did. Yeah, it's all right. I'm sorry, Lily. Go ahead. I'm you got to pay attention. <laughs> okay, but uh, let's talk about Jeff McNeil. Second half, he's batting three eighteen, ten doubles, seven homers. The problem with O'Neill is that he's very light. Right? Wouldn't you say he's so? light? What does yeah, that mean? He, light? he doesn't really excite anybody. With he's been any, great lately. He's been, as I said, 318, 10 doubles, 7 homers, 16 RBIs. That's what he's been in the second half. How much would you pay for Jeff McNeil next year? I like him. Well, how much would you I pay? I don't know yet. Approximately. I'm not holding it anything. <laughs> but is he a $10 player, 15 or a $5 player? Uh, he's a $10 player. $10 player. I yeah. kind of agree with you. What does right. Laura think? She's our resident All master. right, Laura. Laura, what's Jeff McNeil next year? What's he worth? What are you paying for What round? Year? There you go. Uh, what round? Jeremy Gibbs, love you, man. Good to see you in the chat room again. Triple play, Mitchell Hartson, Big Al. Zelmo's back. Zelmo. Okay. Where's Chris today? There you go. Mitchell Hartson. Where's Chris JP? There you go. All right, okay. Tyler. Tyler Holton is someone who deserves recognition as one of the better relievers in baseball. Yeah, and nobody knows about him. Since July 1st. Does anybody have Tyler Holton? <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nobody. Come on. Anybody. Tyler Holton. I don't even know who he is. Look this, out. Until this morning. But he just, you know, there were plenty of good pitchers with good numbers. And this is how you win fantasy baseball. You take a pitcher with good numbers even though you don't get saves or, or wins, as opposed to taking a bad pitcher who gives you, who hurts your ERA and everything else, uh, who may get a couple of saves. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Holton is perhaps the Tigers' best reliever with a 2.66 ERA and an 086 whip. Um, I'll tell you, only four saves, but he could see more save opportunity. So it's his name in your kitchen table. It is Tyler Holton. Tyler Holton, since July 1st, 28 and a third inning, 17 hits, .32 ERA. Yes. What the hell? All right. 21 strikeouts and four walks, okay? He's Star been... Dog is here. Good morning. Good morning to our Royals insider. All right, you mentioned Tyler Holton and Star Dog shows up. Let's go That's to the busy spam, phone. Leonard. It's Let's spam, Leonard. Let's see if it is. No, it's not spam. It is. Hello? Hello, go ahead, keep going. He wants me to keep going while he talks to spammers. He's the only one in the country that the spammers hang up on him. All right. Right, Leonard? That was from our HOA telling us it's raining. All right, thank you <laughs> so very the much. The they pool, say that... uh, but, but the pool probably won't be open if it rains. It's raining right now. I know, so what? come on, you people. Uh, All right, so, you know, as if you need a phone call to tell you because you wouldn't figure it out if you were going to the pool. That's right. Okay, Jaron Duran, not to waste this rally. 30th stolen bases right after. Yeah. I hate this BS, okay? What? They suspended him for, for two a, games. You know, the thing he used about. A, but he used a homophobic slur. I know, okay? but he I didn't. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't, like, looking at a gay person and saying, you know, you're. 
You're I don't know calling what them said. a slur. It was a guy that was taunting him in, from the stand, and he act he used that word, which is now apparently the new f word. I don't promote anybody using homophobic slurs, but give me a freaking break. Everybody has to go out there and virtue signal about what a great person they are because they can't believe that Jaron Duran and he's such a bad guy. Give it a break. The guy used a slur. Okay, it was an. I'm sure he was. I really. The fact is, he wasn't looking at a gay person saying, like, you're this, I don't like you, blah, blah, blah. He was just, like, he was in the moment. But regardless, we have to still talk about it because these vultures can't let it go. That he stole his 30th base right after the Red Sox, handed him a two-game unpaid ban after he was your... I, I just can't. Let's move on. Okay. Vientos, though. But wait a second. I don't... Vientos, yes. okay, played 200 games at AAA when Beatty just played 86 games, okay? Uh, but, Mark Vientos yeah. is going to hit 30 bombs. He's going to hit 30 bombs, okay? Yes. He's gonna, is he going to win a gold glove? Uh, he, may, <sighs> he may find himself at first base. If, they, if the Mets trade... Uh, who's the first one? Pete Alonzo. Lost volume. Oh. Danny, we cut you off. I'll tell you what. Yes, whatever happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, whatever happened to that? It's under Can we the go head, back to that, please? Under the heading of bull dinky. Okay? And poppycock. Yes, it is. Okay. Everybody still have sound? Hey. Now let's just make sure. Danny. Sound's refresh, still here. Danny. Danny here. Fuller, refresh. Uh, somebody say something if you don't. Well, if you don't have sound, you don't hear me. So let, <laughs> just throw to that one, Okay. Uh, so let's we ask. have sound, Leonard. Okay. I can tell you that we have sound just fine. All right, go ahead. Okay. So Vientos got 240 games at AAA, like you said, and Beatty got just 86 games. But his progression with not only the bat, but his glove. He's yes. doing great with his glove. So he's the third baseman now for the Mets. And he might even find himself at first base sooner rather than later if they trade Pete Alonso or don't right. sign him again, which I hope they do because I think Pete Alonso is great. Well, Pete Alonso is a big part of this team. They will only do something if they get something back. The he Met has cooled off of it. Via he has. But the Mets are definitely uh, trying to win. They're not trying to build a team. Uh, they are trying to win. Pete Alonso hit his 100th home run at City Field. He hit his 27th home run of the year and 100th career home run at City Field. How about that? The Orioles have played four. They have played their... The, <laughs> the Orioles have played... 460 baseball for the past two months. They're 23 and 27. If they continue that pace for the rest of the season, they'll finish with an 89 to 73 record. 89 and 73, and they'll miss the playoffs. That's possible. Can you believe it? All right. What about our boy Hold it. Here's Polar a, Bear? Here's a question. A question for the chat room. In the last 30 days, 30 days, who has hit more home runs, Pete Alonso or Jake Berger? Okay. Uh, Pete Alonzo or Jake Berger? I guess it Berger. has to be Jake Berger since we Why? wouldn't even be having this conversation if it wasn't. Well, you can that's say my that. theory. Or do you have? Uh, that's how. That's how you narrow th the answer Danny down. Danny Fuller lost his volume. Okay. What Wait, you, you can't volume? leave, Danny. He left already. Okay. Oh, he did. And SM King oh, turns his Berger for sure. He didn't that leave. That means he has sound. Jake Berger has fourteen, the most of any player. In the last 30 days, right? And then there's a player named Quinn Matthews. Pay attention to this guy. He's baseball strikeout leader in the minors with 168. You want to know who he is? We try to tell you who these guys are because when they're available to get them for next year, you want them. Okay? Quinn Matthews. Go ahead. I'm trying to keep Danny Fuller around. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. So, Jake Berger, yes. So, what about Quinn Matthews, you already said? Yes, we already talked David about David Vesta Matthews. today, yes. yesterday. 81 pitches, 5 innings, 6 hits, 2 runs, 0 walks, 6 strikeouts, 15 swing and misses, 
His velo was down a bit, but there's still so much potential with David Festa. Yeah, he's in the Minnesota rotation. So if you, you know what, we're trying to come up with new pitchers. And David Festa, I don't know how many people love this guy, but now's the time to get him if you need a pitcher. David Festa, go. David Bra- Festa. You know, Bryce Miller and George Kirby, it's, a, it's, a, it's like they're the same pitcher. Right? Bryce Miller, 139 innings. Okay, George Kirby, 144. Uh, Miller's got a 329. Kirby, 342. It's pretty close between Bryce Miller and George Kirby. Okay, okay. Randy Rosarino. Oh, here's a guy that everybody loves. And I don't know why. Go, baby, go. 0 for 5 with 5 strikeouts yesterday. Right now he's 0 for 15 with 10 strikeouts in his last 4 games. Okay? That's Did you hear that? What? A Rose Arena has stopped hitting completely. Yeah, I know. His third consecutive 2020 season was last year. But there's more under the hood here, they say. His 254 batting average was the worst of his career and a continued decline in average. He was more accepting of walks than he ever has been in his career and used the OBP. Sure was a rough day for Mariners outfielder Randy Arosen Rena, their prized deadline acquisition. Here I am thinking he's a damn Tampa Bay guy. Merrill is here. There you go. Good, Good morning. morning to Merrill. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, a Rosarina, he puts up some numbers, but uh, he, he strikes out too much, and I, I don't know, I, I just don't like him as a player. But I do like, you know, at the beginning of the year, were you thinking at any time of drafting Chris Sale? Andrea? Yes. Were you thinking at any time yes, of taking I a was. shot? Yes, I was, absolutely. And how come you passed him up? I think I didn't pass him up in a Oh, really? Weeks. He had a league-winning value this season based on where he was drafted. Six innings pitch, 17 swing and misses, and he's almost in Cy Young territory. Uh, Earned runs allowed by Chris Sale in his last 12 starts. Uh, Very little, let's put it that way. And he's the National League Cy Young Award winning front runner. He had 87 games with 10 or more strikeouts, during his major league career, only seven pitchers have more. Chris Sale. Is Chris Sale a Hall of Famer? I, I don't think yes, so. I do. Uh, because his consistency hasn't been there. I like All him. Right? Go ahead. Jackson. Jackson Churio. Oh, I love him. Last 30 days, 100 at bats, 360 batting average, six home runs, 18 RBI, 17 runs, six stolen bases, and a one OPS. Okay. And so, then, yeah, go ahead. He hit a home run yesterday. It was his 15th of the season with 16 steals. He's one of 14 big leaguers to reach 15 and 15 so far. As Sam King Turk talks about the guy in his league who took Chris, Merrill. Good morning. Who took Chris Sale in a supplemental draft, and everybody was laughing at him. Okay, Chris Sale could be the among the biggest surprises in baseball this year. Most of us, including me, thought that his start career was over. So, uh, yeah, Churio is only 20 years yeah. old. Oh, Churio. Go ahead. Talk about Churio. I already did. Mason Wynn has homered in back to back games. He went one for four with a solo home run and a walk in Friday's seven to six loss to the Dodgers. He's gone three for 17 with two extra base hits since he returned from the illness. He's a shortstop. Showed a little pop with four homers over a 10 game span from July 26th to August 4th. Though he's had to settle for four doubles and a homer over his last nine games, he continues to impress, though, with a two seventy five batting average, 10 home runs, 42 RBIs, 57 runs scored, and 10 stolen bases in 113 games. Look at this chat room. How many people are talking about they made wrong predictions on Chris Sale? Yeah. So many, had, including me. He went to the Braves, though, and that's when you should have said he yeah. might be okay. Chris Sale. Boston really wrecked him. Big surprise. Just kidding. Luis Severino, shutout, four hits, one walk, one hit by pitch. Uh, He threw a season high 113, and he threw 99 miles per hour in the ninth. Yeah. I got to tell you. Yay, Severino. Scattering four hits, and he struck out eight. Three of the four hits were doubles, but he bore down, and I'll tell you what, 
He had an impressive turnover. He, he was 0 for 3 with an 8 ERA over his prior four starts. So, if you have Chris Severino, is now the time to, to his trade name is, His name is Sevi. Sevi. Luis Severino. Luis Severino. Would you have? Would you trade him at this point? Tommy off Johnson off to church. Have a great day. There you go, Tommy Johnson. Good for you. Would your I kid. trade him? The trade deadline is over, Leonard. Don't say that. <laughs> it's not in every league the trade deadline is over. So go ahead. <laughs> we'll talk about somebody. Talk about Jackson. Talk about uh, Raphael Devers. Yes, he's okay. hit two games in a row home runs. Right, yeah. Boston ball? Okay. <laughs> he was a, His long ball was the... Uh, third baseman second in as many days. He had an 11-game streak without a homer. 27 home runs. How much are you paying for Devers next year? I like Devers. He's uh, going to go in the first round, probably. Back-to-back games with uh, home runs for Devers. So what are you paying? Are you paying $17? Yes. 18 19 something like that. Between 25. 17 What? Devers, $25. 25 Yes. I had him between 17 and 20 Okay. okay, you're going to go a little bit more. The RBI became... And Holy says 96% of the owners admit they were wrong about sale, and the other 4% are liars. <laughs> <laughs> Since the RBI, RBI became an official <laughs> stat in 1921, Darian Blanco is only the 14th player to get seven RBIs out of the ninth spot in the batting order. That's okay, what about, let's finish it off with Jackson Merrill. Okay, go ahead. Over the last 30 days, 89 at bats, 337 batting average, five home runs, 20 RBIs, 20 runs scored, three stolen bases, a 1.038 OPS. 61 consecutive starts came to an end yesterday as the rookie yield his spot to Bryce Johnson in center field, but Merrill has an outstanding 290 batting average, 322 on base percentage, and 450 plate appearances. Mm. And he is really working hard to get the rookie of the year, Leonard. Yes, he is. Let's talk about James K. off to church. Great to see you. Jeffrey Springs, one of the players who may still be available. Oh, give me a break. He had back to back good starts. Uh, today against a good Diamondbacks team, you know, it was yesterday, 76 pitches. So he's a very reliable pitcher. So here's a new pitcher. Sorry. Just he's not a new pitcher. A new pitcher in fantasy baseball. I don't know how many people who have him. Jeffrey Springs. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Get your face out of my face. Okay. Sincere thanks to everybody. What a great Sunday podcast. And great to have Laura back and Mary. Big Al on the Prowl, Chris from Cambridge, Danny Fuller, James Capleon, Laura, Leonard Donaldson, Merrill Mitchell, Roto Lady, SM King Turd, Star Dog, Tommy Johnston, Triple Play, my buddy, the great unholy Toledo and Zilmo. And who else we That's got? That's Boston Paul and Steve O. Stephen O, Boston Paul, Ralphie, Holy <laughs> Mackerel. We will see you all tomorrow, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting us.